Anyways, we're back. We're holding Horror Nights 32 Part 2. We had this time to do some things that we missed, so we're back in the fog to bring you all the things that you keep asking us for. Be sure to enjoy all of the hollow screams. Breathe the fog in deep and have a good time. But you heard the girl. And so far in this festival, the only two reliable ones are ones that have appeared before, both the Crimson Chaos Sin Cider and then also the Lacto Cooler. Everything else has been already awful, though there is still one we're hunting for tonight that they were out of the first week. You have to try. Cider's up. Pinky's up. If you're looking for something light, you like something cidery, you can't go wrong with the original scent. I give that three and a half out of five points. Here we have the Heart of Dombala. One of those deep cut Chucky references with edible glitter. Now I don't know where the edible glitter comes in, but uh, what looks like, and you don't know if you guys can see it, may look like condensation. There's actually an entire bottom full of edible glitter. I don't know what that's gonna look like at, I don't know, four or five a.m. tomorrow morning, but I'm gonna find out. I won't report back to you at all. I'm not gonna tell you what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna drink this right now and tell you how it tastes. I think it'll be a very glittery bathroom experience. Sunshine and rainbows, most definitely. Ooh. It's minty. Actually quite pleasant. It gives me like mojito vibes, but a little bit sweeter. I actually think this may rival the brain tonic. It's actually quite enjoyable. It might be worth getting a monkey cup for and Blinky Cup refills. It's a solid four out of five pause. I quite enjoy that. I may need that in a second. So here we have the to Die For Nashville Hot Chicken from the Chucky Boot here at Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, with a drizzle of ranch, you got to some chives and stuff in here. And a little popcorn bucket. So it's like basically popcorn fried chicken. That is supposedly spicy. Now you know how I feel about things that claim to be spicy. If you're gonna say you're gonna be Nashville hot chicken, I expect to be running out of here like chuckles to the house on fire. We shall see. If that is Nashville hot chicken, then Typhoon Lagoon must be like the Arctic. Or Volcano Bay must be like the Arctic if that's Nashville hot chicken. Uh, spice level is like a 1.5 out of 10. I'm barely getting a tickle in the back of my throat. Now, obviously, you should pad that because I'm a spice head and I don't feel spice the same as a majority of people, but of you people that do love spice and spices, you're going to bite into this and think that your Chucky is literally playing a game on you. So this is not spicy. It's spicy. It's flavorful. The chicken's good. It's nice and juicy. The breading isn't terrible. I quite like the ranch. The flavor is good. It's just not spicy. Which leaves me with a dilemma because the food tastes good, but you lied to me. And I don't like it when you lie on my food. Three out of five plus. That's being generous. It probably should be a two. But the flavors are there, so you're getting the food. You're getting by on your good looks and good flavor alone. So here we have the vegan churros. They look a little different than they did last time. There's a little less, but we all expect that. Opening weekend happens, they make changes. We come back on Wednesday, things are different. This is not Wednesday, but it's still different. Um, all right, let's see. I think we should have probably got spoons, but. 
after almost choking on that embarrassingly. Um, <laughs> these are still just as good as they were last. I don't even know what day it is last anymore. Last week? Last week sometime. Yeah. Whenever we ate these, I feel like it was Sunday, maybe? Yes. These are just as good. There's just a few less of them. I'm not mad about it because I realistically could not eat that entire portion myself. So Princess and I are sharing because sharing is caring with yes. friends. Um, they're just as good. These are consistent. I know when we had Mardi Gras and we had the churros, sometimes people were seeing consistency issues and it does happen, but I feel like whatever they're doing, they got it down and I'm here for it. I really feel like Shelby was onto something. This is like half. Not even half. We were just, we were joking about how many of these I was going to steal from her. And I said I was only gonna take one. She was like, oh, you could have two and a half. And then we saw the portion and I was like, I'm only taking one. Because like literally I just took one fourth of her meal by taking a churro. I'm not mad about it. It's, a, it's still a lot of sugar. It's really good. Literally my favorite thing on Halloween Horror Nights. It, it takes me back to like my childhood days at Disneyland when I would eat these and I love them. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. This is a five out of five. This is a princessity's item. It's still good even though the portion is like really sad. But I like the gelato and I like the um, Oreos. It's just really sad. With extra sugar. There's more sugar this time than last time. So. This is Return of the Churro. This is the one, my favorite, plant-based item thus far from Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, the poutine is fine. The walking taco is fine, but by far this is my favorite. Uh, most of you know that I'm lactose intolerant. I can't have gelato or ice cream or anything else. Being able to have churros like dipped in like an ice cream substitute is like heaven to me. I love this. This is like the joy you feel when you walk into McDonald's and the McFlurry machine works. That's still a five out of five claws. This feels like a reward after walking into three or four houses. I'm glad they moved it from where it was because before it was over by La Bamba. That line is ridiculous. It's still ridiculous tonight. It's probably going to be ridiculous for the rest of the Halloween Horror Night season. It's now over across from um, Simpsons Fast Food Boulevard at the food truck. Much better spot for it. You get a chance. You have no excuses now. There's no line. Go get some. Make Universal know that we want more churros. Plant-based. All day, every day. Plant-based ice cream. All the things. Do it. Here we have the butternut squash and duck galette. Is that like gray stuff pearls on it? I was wondering the same thing. There's pearls of some sort on top of a puff pastry filled with shredded duck. I don't understand this to be buckshots. What's a buckshot? Okay, I was just really starting. I was I was really oh. starting to wonder because I'm like, all the food here at Halloween Horror Nights this year has been extremely themed, and I was wondering where the gray pearls came in. Shotgun buckshot. I guess if you like it with your duck, maybe you shoot your butterfly squash. <laughs> One way or the other, it's horror themed food, and we are here for it. I have no expectations for this being bad or good. I both like butternut squash in all its forms, and on occasion, I like duck. So, uh, I guess it's duck season. I mean, it's a very weird mixture of the savory. And like butternut squash isn't what I would call horribly sweet, if you've never had it before. It's like a semi-sweet. I think like a sweet potato, but not as intense if you've never had butternut squash before. With the like, the gamey, savory nature of the duck, they pair well together. It's a very like savory pastry. Think about like the the hand pie you can get in say Diagon Alley or at um, the vegan one. The vegan hand pie, but with meat and open, and you're getting 75% of the way there. It's an interesting pastry. It may not look like a lot, but with just that bite, it's very filling. So watch out for that. And that's been the theme of most of the things at Halloween Horror Nights. That's not a complaint. Is the food has been very filling. I give it 3.75 of 5 bucks. Hi. 
Uh, we have the African lentil and potato sambusa cloth in here. Um, this is located at 57 Scare, as it's called. It's an actual universal food area tent thing that's in the park all the time. They switch over the menu at night, so you won't see this menu item during the day if anyone looks for it. It's a returning item from last Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, we've seen it pop up a couple times in the park, but it's back now. So, just warning anyone who doesn't like spicy food, it does have a little bit of heat typically, so we'll see if that holds true tonight. Okay, just as good as it was last year. I will say it's a little thinner. I know Princess also has noticed this. Um, it still has a lot of filling. There's a lot of crust too, but it's bread-like and I'm not mad about that. It still has a bit of heat to it, but I mean it's warm, flaky, buttery, but not with butter. Just a solid item. You can pick this up and go, kind of like the walking taco. So you could eat this in line real quick. It's kind of the perfect snack, honestly. Beautiful! Tooth Fairy House inspired coffin that's been around for like two years now. Very tasty. I'm here for all of the pasty, pasty pie style, like hand pie and vegan things. I agree. It's very bready, but I love the bread. Every like hand vegan item that comes with like a pastry, or even like the the pot pie that they have at, at uh, Three Broomsticks. The the bread that the, they make is so flaky, which is so hard to do with a vegan like butter, but it is incredible. And I highly recommend getting something flaky, even if it's a croissant, when you're at Universal, because you will not be disappointed. This is like a five out of five. This princess is out of, get you some coffee. too hot for a truly and this is the truly seltzer we've had this one before in our Halloween Horror Night drink video which you should definitely watch all of our horror, Halloween Horror Night videos it tastes like a seltzer I mean if you want to light a nice light seltzer to drink while you're in line waiting over an hour for our house this is the way to go won't feel sick afterwards. I'll give it a three out of five seltzers. It's not amazing, but it won't make you sick. True the vodka. Remember said we tried this before in our drink video. I was not a fan. Uh, most of the canned drinks, canned cocktails, this festival have been well putrid, which is on brand probably in Horror Night, so I suppose that works. Uh, but I, I don't want to drink this, like at all. It tastes like an energy drink without energy to me. I'm just not, not my jam. Two out of five plus. So here we have the Hellfire Jalapeno Club. So it is a cheddar club with cheddar, monster, jalapeno, and the meats riddled. Uh, which is continuing the trend of absolutely humongous Halloween Horror Night portion sizes. I was expecting them tightening up a little mini sandwich. 
This is a bigger sandwich than I got as a wrap at Simpson's Fast Food Boulevard earlier today before Halloween or night. This thing is huge. Like, that's a whole ass meal. Oh, snap. I suppose it's good that we're doing these kind of videos. But you guys can find out where the best meal is because you're only gonna need like one meal for the night. Maybe that in the snack, because like the sizes this year are ridiculous. You see the jalapenos, the cheddar, the monster, the meat. It smells like a club. Cheesy, shredded deliciousness. I guess we're just gonna bite it into the colorful end and see where this journey takes us. It's greasy. In the boat. But honestly, it's pretty good. It's a nice balance of the meat and the cheese. I was worried that the monster and cheddar would overpower the meat. It's not really spicy. You see a little bit of jalapeno, but it's not like it's gonna burn your throat. It doesn't feel like legitimately hellfire. It feels like rolling for initiative and you roll a three. But the flavors are there, that's what matters. Give me three and a half out of five claws. This could be a Halloween Horror Nights meal for me. This Nightmare Nectar Blonde Ale was a drink we were looking for the first week of Halloween Horror Nights, but they were all out. And now they have it back, and it is vegan. Oh, nutty and light. It's kind of like an Oktoberfest, but more like Hefeweizen style. I enjoy that. It's interesting. I will give it three out of five pops. So we have the Nightmare Nectar, which, you know, starting off, not a bad name. Blonde Ale, I guess we could have just dropped the blonde. We get it, it's blonde colored. It runs in the walls. People make jokes about it. Not the wrong blondes, blondes are people too. And beers, apparently. Okay, it's, it's up there on the bitterness scale. I would say it's uh, almost IPA level with this bitterness on the back end, but has a drinkability that most IPAs don't have. Uh, if you like a little bit more of a complex sort of blonde ale, this might be up your alley. Uh, definitely one of the better draft beers we've had so far. I'm interested to try the others. I give this three out of five pops. We're gonna call this Korean corn dog the sequel, the revenge. Uh, for those of you who have been with us for a bit, last time we went to California uh, to visit the family, uh, we took a trip out to University of Hollywood, and I tried their Korean corn dog, which I was extremely confused and extremely disappointed in. And then Universal drops a cordyceps corn dog, which is a Korean corn dog covered with sprouts, potato sticks, and a. Uh, mushroom cream sauce like this boy is crispy i haven't seen a corn dog this bloated since well a bloater playing last as much which honestly tracks on theme uh universal what are you feeding your corn dogs this is the one she told you not to worry about this is a big boy i don't even know where to I guess the traditional corn dog is, is it treated like a glizzy? Are we, are we glizzy in it, I guess? I'm gonna try to get a little bit of the cream in there. So far, I'm turning in the same thing I did with the hot dog, the Korean dog and uh, corn dog in Hollywood, is that it was like corn dog cheese, corn dog cheese. So far, Nothing but cheese. Like that's a cheesy boy. An oozy boy. You crack this boy open, spores are coming out. I'm gonna do exactly what I did with the Korean corn dog. Instead of biting it traditionally, I'm gonna bite it in the middle, see if I can find there's any actual meat in here. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there it is. The meat. That boy just tried to take my life. Just had the quarter set for it. There's a bit of bias built into this rating because I don't like hot dogs. Like I despise them. I will usually only consume a hot dog if it's covered in copious amounts of chili and relish and nothing else. No cheese. I like the vegan ones. I do like the vegan ones. But I, hot dogs is a base. I don't like them. And they're disgusting. And not because I don't know what's in them because I know that they're just like the leftover innards and stuff. I just don't like the taste. I think they're gross. Uh, but this actually with the mushroom cream and the cheese and the potato sticks actually has a nice texture to it. The cheese is amazing. If you're down for hot dogs and a ridiculous amount of cheese, and I say ridiculous, I mean like about to take you into a boxing ring level of cheese, this is for you. As it is, I'm giving it a three and a half out of five claws, even though I'm tapping out and I honestly am not gonna be able to eat another bite of this. This boy is too big and it definitely has me on the ropes. It is very interesting to see the proliferation of this mushroom cream. This is the same mushroom cream that you done Twisted Tater, which is both makes sense because Twisted Tater is at the same booth as this. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, go check out our vegan Halloween Horror Nights Twitter 2 video that has the vegan Twisted Tater with the mushroom cream on it. Uh, that just proves you can make mushroom cream, Universal. More of that. That's been Halloween Horror Night 32 Part 2. Week because two. you asked for it. Week 2. Week 2. Week 2. Part 2, Week 2. Cleaned up some things we hadn't tried. There's always so much to do at Halloween Horror Nights. Always so much fun to have. Running extra houses, getting more food. The food does change and improve week to week as we've seen. These portion sizes are still massive. We think this is the year to come to Holland Horror Nights. If you have never been, yes. it's time to come. And we'll probably do more week to week. Yes. Find that, find other stuff, catch up with some socials. We're on everything at this point. Remember, we're your number one choice in foodie infotainment. And if there's anything else you can see us do, the comments are always going to place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, Bear will eat himself into that lake and become the new water show. Actually, I'm just going to camp out in Yeti Campground, but you heard the girl. <laughs>